Hello, my name's Ed Frawley. My wife and I own Learburg. We get a lot of questions in our Ask Cindy segment. And this is another one on a leash reactive Rhodesian Ridgeback, what this customer has had since it's eight weeks old. It's now three years old. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read the question because leash reactivity is a big, big thing. And different people have different levels of reactivity. We'll talk about it here. My three-year-old Rhodesian Ridgeback is reactive to most dogs on leash. From eight, from eight weeks old, she's been like this. And despite every type of training, nothing works. I've had luck training reactive dogs in the past, but nothing works with this dog. She has continued to be a challenge in my life. She walks well on lead, right up to the point that we encounter another dog. As a puppy, I briefly used a prong collar with her uh, to down, and it worked wonders. This taught her to walk well on the lead. I only used it for one month. Basically, uh, it's illegal here in, in England. So I moved to a halty. Uh, I also used a front clip harness uh, and slip leads. She is now fine on a flat collar. I've taught her, watch me, I've taught her to walk in 180 degree circles when she sees another dog. I've trained her to leave it. Uh, I use leash jerks and I redirect by bribing her with food. She's, <laughs> that's probably not the word we would use, bribing with food. <laughs> we would reward eye contact but that's neither here nor there. She's incredibly well behaved with everything else. If I say 100% focused on me, she will leave the other dog. However, no one else can do this. And after one year of, of this method, she still has not learned to stop being so reactive when she's with another person. I can manage this behavior, but I cannot stop it. Do you have any ideas? Well, a couple. <laughs> we would not have used a prong collar on a puppy like this. Uh, I just think a lot of times on leash reactivity, to use a prong collar on a leash reactive dog overstimulates them. They're already acting the way they're acting because of anxiety. And if you put a prong collar on that dog and pop it with a prong collar, you're gonna to add to that anxiety and the leash reactivity is gonna get worse. I mean, with some dogs, you could put a prong collar on a dog that's being reactive, really reactive to another dog, and it lays, raises their level of being reactive so high that it's gonna redirect that dog, your dog, it's gonna redirect them into turning and biting you. And it's not because the dog's hates you, it's just a reflex action from being anxious. So don't use prong collars on leash reactive dogs. We would recommend not using halties and these harnesses. Harnesses are made to pull. Using a harness on a leash reactive dog is a terrible idea. We would use the dominant dog collars that we sell. They're not meant for a pop correction. They're, I'll talk about them in a minute. But that's what we would recommend. And where she said she bribed the dog, there's nothing wrong with that either. I, like I said, just don't call it bribery. It's not bribery because you're using a food reward to redirect the dog away from another dog. And there's a progression of doing that. And we would recommend, I mean, we have very good courses on leash reactivity. We have Michael Ellis did just an excellent one here at Learburg here a year or so ago. Um, Tyler Muto has done one with us. There's nothing wrong with redirecting a dog's attention away from another dog it's focusing on and turning and redirecting on you so you give it a food reward and then move off in that direction. Don't even give the dog a chance to turn around and focus back on that dog. But that's gone into a lot of detail in this online training that we have. But don't call it bribery. It is not bribery. In the end, we want to 
wean the dog off of food rewards if we have to. We can wean them off on a toy. We can just basically wean them off. Uh, for, the, for the best part, they can learn that when we say, hey, let's go this way, eventually they will. And hopefully, we can get the dog to ignore these other dogs. When it's done right, and over you know, hundreds and hundreds of, of times, if we do the training right, when it sees another dog, it can turn and look to us because it knows sees a dog over here, I'm going to react to that. I used to react to that. Well, now, if I don't react to that, I can look at my handler and it's going to give me a food reward. Nothing wrong with that. As far as asking or expecting our dog to be able for us to hand a leash to somebody else and then have that dog not be reactive with that person, it's not, we've got it so it's not reactive with us, but now I'm going to teach it not to be reactive when I hand my leash to somebody else. That's crazy thinking. Is that the right word to use? Probably not. It's not a good idea. We don't expect our dogs, we don't hand our dogs off to other people unless it's a good friend that trains in the style of training that we train in and they know exactly what they're doing. But that's few and far between. So you're just better off. Don't even expect that. That's it's expecting something that's just not going to happen. And the bottom line is, with some dogs, and maybe this dog, it might be a lifetime management situation where you're never going to be able to stop, doing the rea stop making it reactive. It may, it may require proper management, proper redirection, uh, finding locations to walk in that don't have other dogs that are what we call sterile locations. You might have to do that with this dog for the rest of its life. No one can tell you that they can for sure fix every reactive dog. The only thing they can tell you to do is you may have a situation here that's beyond this dog's level or ability to learn, in which case the only solution is to have the dog wear a muzzle and walk the dog in a sterile environment. But I will say this, management is a lifetime deal with our dogs. A lot of people think, well, I'm going to take my dog out and I'm going to take him to obedience class and I'm going to teach him to sit and to down and to come and do all the nice things that I, they teach in the class. And when we're done, we're done. Well, training and good management is a lifelong process with our dogs. And especially when you have reactive dogs, it's going to be a lifetime management issue that you might as well get used to, you might as well accept it, and you're the only one that's going to know whether, hey, i got to teach my dog to wear a muzzle when I go out because there's always going to be a possibility of another dog there. We've got a very good video on how to measure a dog for a muzzle. we got a very good video that I did on how to condition a dog to liking a muzzle going on and accepting a muzzle because it knows that you can get a food reward through the side of the muzzle that you have. And we have a lot of muzzles that, can, that are, we got, I don't know, 80 some sizes and styles of muzzle where we can pass a food reward through the front of a muzzle. So on the dominant dog collar issue, which is the collar that we would recommend for dogs like that, there's a learning curve to learn how to use them. And you don't do it by popping a dog. It's a dominant dog collar is a collar that I designed back in the 1990s. And in a way, it's similar to a slip collar, but it's not one. The slip collars go over the head of a dog. Well, if you have a dog that has a big head, you have to have a pretty big slip collar for it to go over the head. But the neck is a lot smaller than the head, like mine. So if you get a big collar, the tab can hang way down here on a dog, like a, a Rottweiler or a, a pit bull, or it doesn't matter, St. Bernard. Uh, where you have to have much larger, larger collar to go over the head, but then there's always a long tag. Well, to get any, to take up slack in that collar when you put your leash on it, you've got to move your leash a long way. The dominant dog collar is designed to wrap around the dog's neck and click, and click on it there, and there's a slip collar there, that, or a slip ring there that you attach your leash to, and we design it <coughs> so that there's only a one inch slack once it's wrapped around and put on the dog's neck. So you only have to move that collar a little bit to take up slack on that dog. 
It always comes down on dominant dog collars to the way to use it is to lift up on the collar and it's fit pretty snug around the dog's neck. It always comes down to how much upward pressure you have to have to get a behavior change. That's the key. You don't have to hang a dog. All you have to do is put some upward pressure to, to get a behavior change. That's what you're looking for. As soon as you get your behavior change, you can let off on the pressure. How much pressure you have to put on on some dogs can be more than a lot of other dogs. But even, in, even with a dog that you've had to use a lot of pressure uh, upward on the dog, those dogs will learn to respect that pressure upwards. And after you've done it a few times, you only have to pick up a little bit and it'll stop that behavior. It's a, it can be a miracle worker. And I'm gonna also go back and mention one other thing here as far as uh, using a remote collar on reactive dogs. That falls in the same category as using a prong collar on it. Using a remote collar on a reactive dog can cause the dog to be more reactive. It can cause the dog to be more anxious. It can cause the dog to really turn and redirect again into the handler. It's not uncommon for a dog that was poorly handled, a reactive dog that's poorly handled, to turn and bite their own handler. It happens. I mean, it's happened to me 50 years ago when I first started this thing. I learned the hard way by getting dog bit by my own dog. So there's a lot of aspects that go into dealing with a reactive dog. Every one of them could be a little bit different. You have to deal with the dog that's in front of you. You have to give some thought to the problems this dog has. And if you have a problem, find a local trainer that knows and understands the leash reactivity, knows and understands dog aggression. Just because somebody hangs a shingle out and calls himself a dominant or a, uh, a professional dog trainer, only means they're ready to take some money from you. And it takes a long time to learn to understand dog aggression and reactivity. So even if you feel that you need to get professional help from a local trainer, and there's nothing wrong with that, I would still recommend that you get the Michael Ellis course on leash reactivity, study it. It's not meant to be watched once, it's meant to be watched 10 times. And then if you have to go and interview somebody that you may wanna hire, ask them a few things, ask them some of the questions that you would have. You're gonna know enough after these courses to know whether somebody's blowing smoke at you. And don't be afraid to walk away from them because it takes a long time to learn dog aggression. It takes a long time to learn leash reactivity and how to do it correctly. If you have any other questions on dog training, on breeding, on uh, the health of your dog, send Cindy a ticket and she'll answer it. And we've got probably 3,700 Q&As in a database that's a searchable database on Learberg.com. And not all of them go in there. We have thousands more that we didn't put in. But there's, there's 3,700 good ones there. And if you're gonna search on a subject, put a quote, put your key search terms in quotation marks. And that way you're gonna get a more accurate uh, set of questions and answers to read. We have, a, we have a lot of online courses, a lot of streaming courses, and a lot of high quality training aids. Leashes, uh, we have Amish people that make our own leashes. And we only sell training material that Cindy and I would use on our own dogs. We don't try and compete with big, big box stores. That's not what we do. It's not what I've done for the 40 years that I've been producing dog training videos.